so obviously the R Canon R5 and Canon R6 has recently been released and one thing everybody's talking about is the IBIS and when you take a wide-angle lens and you use the IBIS you tend to get these weird wobbly corners and you might think that the, the reason we get the wobbly corners is probably because the IBIS is not good enough or maybe the it doesn't have enough, enough accesses to operate around so I've been doing some research and trying to find out why because the Olympus system has the same issues, the Panasonic system has the same issues, the Canon system has the same issues and Sony doesn't really have those issues but their IBIS are not very good which is kind of weird <laughs> because the Canon and the Panasonic and Olympus is a lot better, it's a lot more stable but you've got these weird warpy edges so the, the footage, the, the corners sort of seem to pulse a little bit and um, so the research that I've done, I've come to a an in very, very interesting conclusion. And that is that the reason we have warpy edges that we just can't fix or that the camera companies can't fix is purely because the image sensor is flat. And the reason it's flat is that it's easy to make and it gives us the ability to change lenses. But actually the sensor should be... Uh, curved it should be like it shouldn't be flat it should be like that if you look from the side it should be almost like a bowl like the inside of a bowl and it depends on your lens so if you have a wide angle lens it must be very like concave and if you have a telephoto lens it must be a lot flatter so that's actually how it should be but because these sensors are difficult to make um, curved sensors and because we want to change lenses on our camera, obviously we don't want to change the lens and the sensor, we just want to change the lens, the camera industry, industry has opted to create flat sensors, but fix the problem of having a flat sensor, fix it in the lens. So the lens projects an image that sort of works on a flat surface. That's why you get these different quality lenses. If your sensor is curved your lens actually becomes a lot more simple because you don't have to overcome the flat sensor problem anymore so your lens has actually become a lot cheaper and there are there has been a lot of um, research and development recently into curved sensors uh, especially one that can change shape based on the kind of lens that you actually mount the cool thing about that is if they do pull it off, it would drop the price of lenses significantly and we would get increased sharpness of our lenses in the center as well as in the corners because the lens just don't need as many elements. Most of the elements in the lens is purely to make up for the fact that the sensor is flat. If the sensor was round, you need less elements. Less elements means more sharpness. You also don't have the... the the reason that lenses have corner sharpness issues where it's sharp in the center but not in the corners is also because the sensor is flat and they have to overcome that issue by doing hacks in the lens to somehow project the image in a way that it's still sharp on the edges and, uh, and, and or, or sharpish in the edges and sharp in the center at the same time. But if the sensor was round, it will automatically be sharp everywhere throughout the picture with a much more simple lens. But how does this all relate now to wobbly video? So, with the projection going onto a flat um, sensor, the problem that we have is that with wide-angle lenses, you want to have straight lines. They call it the spherical lenses. So you want to have any lines that's in your picture. You want them to be straight. You want them to. You don't want them to be curved like uh, GoPro footage. You want them to be straight. So, if you have a curved lens as well, they would be curved. It doesn't solve the straight problem, but it solves the video blur problem. I'll get to that now. <clears throat> so, if you have a flat lens, like a flat sensor, the in order to have straight lines, you have to in the lens zoom in on the corners a little bit so as you get to the edge of a corner in the image so if the image as you get closer to the edge of the 
the, the, the corner of the sensor, you actually zoom in a bit, but you only zoom in in the dimension, in the angle from the center. <laughs> so if this is the center of the photo, if you move to the edge here, you actually only zoom in like that. You don't zoom in like that. If you go straight up, it zooms in like that, but not like that. That's why when you put your face on the edge of a, of a, of a, of a scene or of a, a picture, but it's a wide angle lens, your face becomes weirdly warped because it only zooms in in a certain dimension depending on where you are in the frame. If you're in the corner, it's going to be, let's say you're on the bottom, well, my bottom left, your bottom right um, corner, you would be zoomed like that, but not like that. So your shape, will, your face will get a weird uh, a, a shape. So the problem is now that with IBIS, this is what the, this is physically what the lens projects. Okay, so the lens has a projection that it projects. In this projection is those different zoom, let's call it zoom areas, how it's zoomed in and out. But now what IBIS does is IBIS has a sensor in this area that moves around. Now that's trying to follow the scene. So if the lens shakes, the picture physically moves around in the scene and the sensor tries to catch it so that the image appears still to us, even though it's not actually still, it's actually bouncing around in the projected area. The sensor just bounces around along with it. But now you can see you are going to have the problem where the sensor bounces in and out of these little zoom areas. And that's actually what creates these sort of stretches and shrinkages in the corners. If we were to have curved sensors, it would solve the problem in that the actual projection that the lens gives, we can actually move the sensor around in this area, but the sensor then will move, it will turn as well and the, there won't be any zoom on the corners. The zoom throughout the whole image would be exactly the same. We would then just in post-production, we would then straighten the lines instead of doing it um, in the lens. So the lens won't make sure the lines are straight. We would use lenses that actually project warped lines. But when we extract the photo, we would then stretch them straight. And if that was the case with video, we know where the sensor was. We can just stretch it so that we don't get these weird warpy corners. So that's the solution. So the actual solution to warpy corners is having curved lenses. Obviously, there are other solutions that sort of work okay, and that is to, instead of using, you, you, you use a little bit of IBIS as well as some software. So the software basically fixes these zooming areas and makes sure that it, it sort of doesn't warp, but you might still get um, motion blur in your corners then. So your corners might look like it's just going in and out of focus as it, as it shakes. But fortunately with the lenses and stuff we have today, which is very fast, your background most of the time is going to be blurry anyway. So it's going to blur out a little bit more and less, but you, so you're not really going to see it that much. So that's one way to fix it. So in the meantime, we're just going to have some motion blur in the corners until they get to the point where they can develop curved sensors efficiently. Only at that point would um, our warpy images basically be fixed. So yeah, just my interesting fact of the day. Did some research and yeah, came up with some interesting stuff. If you like this, then remember to press the button. And if you want to see more, then remember to subscribe. Until next time, ciao.